So under the proposed changes, MPs will still be able to claim for hotel bills, gas bills or food bills, the answer is all three. But no more moats. Uh, you're watching The Right Stuff live on Five with Steve First, Carol Thatcher and our very special guest, Scott Capuro. Uh, still to come this fine morning is too much television aimed at thickos, as Sir Michael Parkinson claims. Are terrestrial TV bosses guilty of dumbing down, leaving all the highbrow programming to some obscure digital channel that no one watches? 027 173 555 is the number to call. Uh, right now, though, and I, I think this will be quite interesting, uh, as, as far as what you're going to say, do you trust MPs to clean up their act? Now they've got rid of the Speaker and they've promised to hand control of their expenses to an outside independent body with all claims published online for you to scrutinise every couple of months or so. Or do MPs need to go further still? Perhaps a complete head-to-toe review of the parliamentary process or maybe an immediate general election so you can tell your MP exactly what you think of them so far. I imagine everyone in Westminster from Gordon Brown to David Cameron will want to move on from the nightmare of the last 13 days of humiliation at the hands of the Daily Telegraph. <laughs> but I would say let's not move on too quickly with half-baked ideas thrashed out on the back of a fag packet. I'm with Douglas Carswell, the Tory. Uh, who was first to call for Michael Martin to go. He told the BBC this morning that Parliament needs many, many more reforms. A new speaker's a start. I think a new government will help, but we need a, a new progressive consensus over how we do politics. We need to scrap the professional politicians. We need citizen lawmakers. Citizen lawmakers. No more professional politicians. I hear music in my ears, not an annoying hum. I like the cut of his jib, but what about you? Are you sick of reading about fat cat MPs riding on a taxpayer-funded gravy train or hungry for more? There's never been a better time for a political shake-up. Politicians know they've blown it. Do you trust that they've learned from their mistakes or does more need to be done, Carol? Well, as uh, Honourable Member said in that clip, we're only in the starting blocks, aren't we? Right. Well, I, hope, I hope we are. I mean, there's some suspicion that get rid of Michael Martin, problem with expenses goes away, let's all move on back to, well, back to business as usual. He only went yesterday, but judging by the disrespect the general public now has after two weeks of these revelations mm. for yeah. Parliament, for MPs and for the whole floor, I think a major clean-up is required. As I just said, we're in the starting blocks, there are going to be lots of hurdles to get over before the finishing line, and then we can judge what they've done. Where does a general election fit into all of this? Because you're not necessarily going to get a clear-out well, you might do, but what you do get then is you get an opportunity to address the situation that your MP has been in, i.e. if they have been milking it for the last few years and their names have cropped up in the papers and you don't like it, you've got a chance to, to have a say. Is an election an important part of the process? Do we need one sooner rather than later? Well, as David Cameron said the other day, let's get the public involved in a general election is certainly that. Although, I mean, as everyone keeps on saying, Gordon Brown calling the election now is a bit like Turkey's voting for Christmas because <coughs> he will probably be out of a job if you believe the opinion polls and a lot of Labour MPs will lose their seats. In terms of MPs, I think some are going to voluntarily stand down who um, yeah. have been seen to be, say, let's put it this way, overdoing the expenses. Some may well get deselected by their yep. associations who say, look, we don't want you as our well, candidate. Well, stories in the paper saying that the, the Tory, uh, Tory groups regionally are, are not taking David Cameron's view that you should deselect people. So, you know, it, it really, that's what I mean. It, it, an uh, election would force the issue, wouldn't it? And a general election does give every voter out there who bothers to vote a chance to elect somebody else. Yeah. OK. Uh, Steve, do you think more needs to be done or are you satisfied that... Uh, this horrible expenses... No, I mean, been we, we've been in this kind of... I mean, probably not to the same degree. We've been in this situation before with kind of cash for questions yeah. as well and, and sleaze, yeah. which, yeah. you know, which was... seemed what well, certainly seemed to be much more a kind of Tory problem yeah. at that time than... The, I mean, this is right across the board. Um, you're talking about um, kind of lack of confidence within um, party committees or local committees. Um, it doesn't surprise me that, that, that the Tories are, are, are less responsive to this than um, probably a, the party with, with a younger uh, committee base. And I just think uh, it, it will happen, but it's still, that, you know, the, the, it, even by publishing these things online, there's always going to be a grey area as to what, uh, what isn't yeah. acceptable, and then people going off and be, sitting on, on companies as directors and getting money for that as well. There's always been ways to top up income as an MP. Or public speaking, or you know, I mean, there's any number of those. Yeah. And I think maybe it's time to actually have a uniform, higher rate of pay for how MPs. Do you, how do you get rid of career? I mean, if you if you pay them more, surely we're just going to encourage more people to become career politicians. Well, the very thing that Carswell was saying we want to try and avoid. We want to have 
Yeah, but then you can just but then you can eradicate then you can just say well then there's no expenses there's no gray area for that you can't sit on this you can't do that so just and it's a uniform amount I don't okay, think you're ever okay. going to get rid of career politicians either, by the well, way. I, I mean. want it to be a career for them. I want them to take it seriously. I don't want to be a hobby. But Paddy Ashdown said on this show, and I thought it was very sage, was that what you really want is someone who's had experience in life. So mm. someone who's had a job. Uh, I mean, Jackie Smith, she was a primary school teacher. Mm -hmm. you know, she had a job. There's, then you've got your sort of George Osborns who, who sort of arrive as political researchers and they work their way through the corridors of Westminster, da 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 da, and you kind of think, well, they don't know anything else. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, real people representing us as opposed to people who just want to get power. But I think anyone that takes that position has an ambition, and their ambition is to be more powerful than they were before they took that position. I just think you should increase these people's pay. They seem a bit desperate, I think, <laughs> claiming little car but, things but and the little thing is, is silly 200 were, pounds for my dental floss they were and all claiming, this stuff. They were claiming they were desperate for a pay rise. They've been claiming that for the last 10 years while simultaneously taking hundreds of thousands of pounds in expenses. Well, that's I don't know whether to trust them when they say they're not. Just give them their pay rise until they stop Why? about it and stop stealing from you. It's like when you underpay an employee and they steal from the cash register. That's what this reminds me of. My sisters worked for a big company in the US for years and they pay their employees a bit more so they don't take money out of the drawer. It's just what it is, you know. I mean, I, I, obviously, if you're a politician in this country, you're feeling undervalued and underappreciated, right? They're not like you, a TV star with loads of money, although you don't dress that way, and I admire that about you. <laughs> you don't show off is what I mean, right? <laughs> Two votes for more money, which we've touched upon before on this show. Uh, I'd like to know your views of that. Uh, Carol and I are quite interested in an election, what that could bring to the, to the, to the, to the do. There's also, I mean, let's think of a bigger picture. Maybe we need to tear up the way the House of Commons is, is arranged. You know, two parties in opposition, always shouting at each other. Maybe we want to think about proportional representation. I don't know. Maybe a, a fascist dictatorship telling you all what to do. I've heard people saying they quite fancy that. That's how bad things have got. Let's hear what you have to say. Have MPs done enough to win back your trust? Kirsty. Maureen's online, too. Maureen, good morning. Good morning. How's your trust in MPs this morning, then? It's non-existent, I'm afraid, and I'm very sad to say so. No as difference working, at all? Sorry, as a working taxpayer and a member of the voting public, um, it, it, I feel quite distressed about the whole thing. What do you want, then, Maureen? What can be done? Um, first of all, I would like to see any uh, MP um, re... Uh, being reinstated, they've got to um, campaign again and uh, uh, be reinstated. So an, an election? I, yeah, um, well, yes, um, yeah. but I think the general election is only part of the process. Right. Um, I feel that these people have not only committed fraud, but they have stolen my hard-earned money, and I would like to prosecute them if I had the knowledge and the where for all that is exactly what I would do. The, the, police, are the, the police are looking into that, so, so I mean, that, that was a, a development uh, over the weekend, beginning of this week, so there is a police body that's going to be looking into this. That's, that's a good thing, I think. Whether or not it results in any kind of a prosecution, we don't know. Anything else, Maureen? Yes, uh, and again, um, you know, um, I work and I, my earning is the basic minimum rate, £5.73 an hour. And if I'm away, working away from my normal area, I have um, expenses. I'm allowed a certain amount of money to claim back for an evening meal. Right. No alcohol. I don't get to claim... Um, electricity, gas, power. I don't get to um, Do you have a, a moat, Maureen? House. Do you, do you have a, any kind of moat at all? A, a small one? Sorry? No, any kind of moat at your house? Drawbridge? No, I don't pond. have a moat and I do have to do my own cleaning and my right. own decorating. And, you know, why should, why should a member that a member of parliament that is supposed to be working on behalf of the people within Britain. Because they're, not being, because they're not being paid enough, is Scott's view. We, we don't value them enough. What do you say to that? Well, I would like to see them living off my salary. Right. That's because I, I feel very strongly that if they're already earning roughly three times the national average income and they're supposed to represent ordinary people, everybody, then three times the national average salary seems to be value enough. Thank you for the call. Uh, we have Mariana on line four. Uh, Mariana, good morning. Hello. Hi, Hi there. I, I think I've got my name wrong. It's Marina. Oh, uh, Marina. Sorry, my apologies. <laughs> Marina, good morning. It doesn't matter. What worries me is that I think this country is run by hysteria in the media, and I think the MPs would do a lot better 
if they cleared up the act and uh, ran the country. Marina, Mar Marina let me just stop you there and remind you that if it wasn't for the Daily Telegraph, our beloved MPs would be raking it in and none of us would be any the wiser. Thanks for the call. Yeah. Let's have a night. No, 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 you, you, you've got to get on, on, on with the programming. You can't keep throwing stones at the media when the media is the very reason that we've got this change happening. For once, I'm actually very proud of them. Good old Daily Telegraph. Let's have another. Uh, we have Paul on line one. Uh, Paul, good morning. Yeah, good morning, Matthew. Uh, satisfied? Enough been done? No, I'm not. And, uh, you know, I'm glad to hear that regarding the independence of the, the pay review and things like that, and the, the yep. pay is going to be, and the claims going to be taken away from MPs. I also believe, I think, the Speaker should be independent. I think the Speaker should be uh, posted as, as someone completely, um, you know, impartial and, and not, not well, an ex-MP. To, to be fair, again, Paul, you know, this time round it's going to be a secret ballot, which means the whips don't get to muscle in, which means, for once, for the first time, that the Speaker will be, you know, in a truly democratic way, the, the guy or lady that everybody wants to run the House. So, you're going to get that wish. Um, anything else? House. If someone voted by the House as an MP, remember that Martin was an MP, and again, look where we are today. So, I think it should be someone completely independent, someone who's totally impartial and, and, and cannot be... OK. ..is only interested in the, in the power of Parliament. OK, no, I, I hear you, but, of course, the Speaker is there to sort of defend MPs. Um, and ensure the, uh, the smooth running of government. <laughs> um, OK, thank you very much for all your calls. Maybe we've done MPs' expenses for now. We shall see what comes out tomorrow. After the ads, though, we're asking if uh, too much TV on the BBC, ITV, Channel 4 and 5 is aimed at thickos, as Michael Parkinson reckons. Mm -hmm. uh, there are too many property, cooking and police chase shows, says Parky, who longs for the days when TV was made for people with an IQ larger than the numbers you find in a bingo bag. Begs the question, is he on to something? What about hugely popular shows like Britain Exploits the Mentally Challenged? A lot more people watch that than University Challenge or, or boring history documentaries. So uh, what do you make, what would you make more of if you were running the BBC? Those kind of populist talent shows or highbrow documentaries uh, that fewer people watch? 0207 173 is the number of your thoughts and we'll hear as many as we can after the break. Which of these terrestrial channels screens the most factual shows? BBC Two, Channel Four or ITV One? Find out after the break.